Good morning, everybody. Morning. So glad to see everybody in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Are you excited about being in the Father's house this morning? I'm excited about being in the Father's house this morning. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Ooh, that's okay. You can hear me now. <laughs> that's good. All right, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Because um, God knows that uh, that's the way I like to start. I think that's the way God, we should always start in prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, and we just welcome you into this place, Lord God. We plead the blood of Jesus over this place, Lord Father. We also invite the Holy Spirit of God here, Lord. We know that you are three in one, Lord God. And we love you, Lord God. And we invite you into this place, Lord God. We rebuke the enemy against us. We plead the blood of Jesus over us, Lord God. Jesus, let nothing distract from your Holy Spirit today, Lord God. Jesus, we just ask you to have your will and your way in this place, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. Jesus, you see all the needs. If you have a need this morning, go ahead and lift up your hand. Lord God, I just ask you to touch those that have a need this morning. Lord God, I just ask you to, to give them what they need this morning. Bless them, touch them, heal them. Lord God, Jesus, we just ask you to have your way in their life. Lord, you know, you know, and you can do it, Lord Father God. You're able because nothing is impossible with you, Lord God. And we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I do have a couple announcements. On October the 25th, we're having a all-staff meeting, and we're going to do Italian. And I had a boss that used to laugh at me for the way I say Italian. But uh, So October 25th, all leaders are all staff meeting. And, uh, yeah, that's it today. All right, we're going to praise and worship the Lord. I will know your church. Jesus is coming back very soon. If you believe that, stand up to your feet and give him praise. Just around. 
Praise the Lord. Running in this church. Praise morning. the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Hallelujah. Sister Brenda, come here. Come here. Praise the Lord. She said she wasn't feeling good. And I know we serve a healing God. Amen. Amen. There's no need for anyone to sit through a church service feeling bad or feeling sick or any of that garbage because it's just garbage. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Stretch your arms forward. Right now, in the name of Jesus. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Right now, Jesus. Lord, heal her body. Every fiber, every bone, every muscle. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, help her. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now, Jesus.
here all week long. It's here this morning. the waters this morning, says the Lord. I have stirred the holy waters and troubled them. Will you step into them? Will you receive what I have in store for you, says the Lord? Will you step in? Will you come into my rest? Will you come into my holiness? Will you come into my blessings? Will you come into my healing? Will you come into what I have provided for you this morning, says the Lord? If you'll just step in, you will receive what you've been asking for in my name. If you'll just step in, you'll receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Lord God Almighty, Jesus, Jesus,
better start figuring out what you're going to do because I can't, keep, I can't keep you. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, I am your provider. Amen. I'm so glad. I don't know how people go through what we go through without Jesus Christ. He is precious. He is precious. He is precious to us. And you know what? In that morning time when there's nobody around, Lord, man, I think you're so sick. Jesus is there. When you're around and you're going through the things of life, when your children act up, oh, Jesus. You think it's bad when they're little? Wait until they turn teenagers and old. Yeah, wait until they're 49 and comes home to their mama. But anyway, Jesus is there. And I love that when you speak his name, it's life. You speak his name, it's healing. Whatever you need this morning, it says rejoice in all things. Rejoice in all things. Rejoice in all things. Even when you don't feel like it. When your heart's breaking because things are not going good. Rejoice. Brother Jason, Brother Tom Don, and Bobby, give me a count, please. We're going to take up the tithes and offering right now. <laughs> Hello, baby girl. Her loves to come to church. Father God, we just thank you right now for the privilege of being able to give to you. We thank you because you always believe in us and you always help us, oh God. You take care of us when we don't deserve to be taken care of, but you always take care of us. And God, we just give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise and we, bet we just love you this morning. And we give with an open heart because you said, let us be a cheerful giver unto you. And we give unto you with everything we have and everything we want to be. And God, we just give you praise this morning. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you know that Jesus is the closest friend you'll ever, you'll ever, ever have in your life? Amen. I am a friend of God. Amen. Jesus, the friend. Give God glory and praise him. Put your hands together.
Lord calls you clean this morning. Boys and girls, if you will stand up. You have built my presence in this house. You feel my breath upon your face. Worship. back to me and worship. Worship. Oh, worship is your life. I am life. Worship and say it to you. I got a message here right in front of me, but I don't want to miss what God has. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as I was getting ready this morning, this little course, it's been a while since I've heard it, but it just simply says, Thank you. 
Jesus. I really don't. This world is crazy enough without having to do it without him. Amen. Turn your Bibles this morning to Titus chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 1 through 8 this morning. I want to thank our worship team for the awesome worship this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Also, it's good to see our dear brother, Pastor John, here with us this morning. And our visitors that are here on the back that are with us this morning, I appreciate all of you for being here as well. Amen. It's a blessing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Titus chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. Thank you, Jesus. The word of the Lord says this. It says, remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasure, living in malice and envy, hate, hateful and hating one another. But listen to what verse 4 says. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards men appear, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. That having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Father God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that's in this place, Lord God. Lord, I ask your Holy Spirit just to take over with, for your servant this morning, Father. Lord, let these words that be spoken not be of me, but, Father God, from you. Let me not say anything that you don't want me to say, Father God. But, Lord, I also pray for your people this morning, Father. Lord, that they have ears to hear and a heart to receive this morning, Father. Lord, that you be glorified and that you be honored, Lord God, Jesus. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. You know, I just want to be talked this morning on just a little bit of renewing this morning because I see so many things happening in our church and, 
It's, it's so awesome to see God just working and, and moving and pouring out his presence on his people. It's just so awesome. And it's such a blessing and it's such a such a fresh wave, amen, that, that you know, I, I just see that God's renewing so many people by his grace and by his mercy and by his sweet Holy Spirit, amen. And I'm just glad I'm, I'm, I'm thankful, I'm, I'm blessing God because that's only something God can do. It's nothing that man can do. It's not by works. It's not by anything that you and I can do this morning, but it's by the grace and by the mercy of the living God, hallelujah, that you and I can come this morning and feel the sweet Holy presence that's in this place, hallelujah, because what, it, it, I like what this says, it says, but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards man appeared, hallelujah, when he appeared, yes, I was lost, I was undone, hallelujah, I was in need of a Savior, but when Jesus stepped on the scene of my life, hallelujah, he changed me, hallelujah, and he'll do the same for you this morning. When you allow Jesus to step on the scene of your life, hallelujah, it changes you. Yes, it does. It changes you for the better of mankind, for the better of your family, for the better of your home, for the better of your marriage, for the better of your children, hallelujah, for the better of every aspect of your life. It betters you, hallelujah, when you allow God to flow and work in your life, hallelujah. It changes you. It, it renews you. It regenerates you. It's not something we hear much preached anymore, but he regenerates you. Amen. He takes your life and he changes it for his glory. Amen. Amen. He changes it. He's renewing even this morning. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I know by the grace and by the mercy of God that he's renewing each one of you. Not because I said so, but because his word said so. Amen. He's renewing you. He's refreshing you. He's reviving you. This is where our church is at. In fact, I, I've continued to ask the Lord. I said, Lord, what's the vision? And he's like, have I not already given it to you? I don't know what I was thinking. But he's like, refresh, revive, and renew. He's refreshing. He's reviving, and he's renewing the hearts and the lives of his people. Hallelujah. Amen. He's reviving. And, you know, and those three that go, Simeon, they go together. Hallelujah. You can't separate them because that's how God works. That's right. Romans 6, 1 through 4. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. This is what the Apostle Paul said. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism, baptism excuse me, into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. There's, you know, I'm just going to say this because I've seen God been, you know, over the last almost two months. No, 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 almost a month now. God's been renewing. He's been refreshing. He's reviving. And there's some here that need to be rebaptized. I'm not going to call you out. That's on you. But they need to be rebaptized because God has been doing a work. And a wonder in your life, hallelujah. 
And when you're baptized, this is what Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 4 is talking. When you're baptized, you are dying to the old. And you're rising again into the newness of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you're rising to the newness of life that's been placed into you. Hallelujah. This is what God's doing right now. This is God, what God's working right now. He's renewing your heart. He's renewing your spirit. He's renewing your, your, your every aspect of your life. You're seeing things in your life that you thought that weren't good going good. They're turning around for the good of those that love the Lord. Hallelujah. You're seeing things in your life that you just say, God, I don't see how. I don't see where. I don't see when. But God is working and he's moving in your life. Hallelujah. And he's stepping on the scene of your life. Hallelujah. Shut that other deal. So we should also walk. It's a walk. It's a walk. We don't just practice it on Sundays and Wednesdays. Amen. It's a day by day, Amen. moment by moment, yes. second yes. by second process. Amen. We walk in the newness of life. We walk in his newness. We walk in his freshness. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to tell you some stuff because, you know, when, when God steps on the scene, and this is actually another message I have in the back, back, but when God steps on the scene, my God, so mountains can move. Yes, can. But when God steps on the scene, Amen. hallelujah, when Jesus steps on the scene, the storms of life have to cease, hallelujah. Amen. When Jesus steps on the scene, Hallelujah. He, 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 there's healing power that flows and works in your body. And when he steps on the scene, hallelujah, that sickness has to leave, hallelujah. When, when Jesus steps on the scene, you can be made whole again, hallelujah. When Jesus steps on the scene, every weapon that's formed against you shall not prosper, and every tongue that rises against you shall be ceased, hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 16 through 17. It says, Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, I can stop right there. If you're in Christ, uh, he is a new creation. Amen. The King James Version uses the new creature. You're a new creature in Christ. Yeah. Because he says, the old things have passed away. <laughs> The old things, the things that are behind you. In fact, the Apostle Paul, he said, I no longer look at the things behind you, but I press forward towards the mark of the high calling which is in Christ. Hallelujah. We got to stop looking at the past and we got to start moving and working towards the newness that Christ is doing in us. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the past will just keep you bound. It won't allow you to move forward if you keep looking back. Yeah. Right. In fact, Lot's wife, God had told him, God had told him, he said, don't look back. But she looked back, and God told, turned her into a pillar of salt. Uh -huh. You're stuck in your past if you keep looking back. You got to look forward. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You got to continue. Yes, I know sometimes the past hurts. Yes. Sometimes the past is the reason why where we're at right now. Right. But we cannot allow the past to define us any longer. We got to walk in the newness of the life of Jesus Christ. 
and allow him to work and allow him to move and allow him to soften this clay this heart of ours and allow him to open up doors that we would normally not see. Allow him to open up opportunities that we normally would not have, hallelujah. Allow him to move in our jobs and to move in our society, hallelujah. Allow us to bless people that normally we wouldn't notice because we're so caught. Yeah. I shut that up. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're so caught up in the past. Uh, some of you have been so, you had your eyes so far in the past that you can't see what's right in front of you. And you can just turn around and allow God to turn you around this morning. Oh my gosh. He's going to work in a new witness and a miracle in your life. He's got your answer. You've been, oh, shot out of the ocean. He's been, you've been praying and praying and seeking God and wondering why your prayer hasn't been answered. But you're so far stuck in the past. You can't see the answer right in front of you. He is a new creation. All things have passed away. Somebody just needs to shake off those heavy bands yeah, and lift up those holy hands yeah. and start just praising the Lord yeah. and let the old saints pass away. Yeah. Just stop dwelling on it. Stop carrying it around. It's a weight that God doesn't want for you because he's got a new thing he's about to do in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 43, 16 through 19. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Do not, verse 18, it says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Verse 19, behold, I will do a new thing. I shall that out of the earth. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He's going to make a way where there is no way. He's going to make a path where there is no path. He's doing a new thing. Shall you not know? Do you not see it? Do you not understand it enough that that's where you're supposed to walk? That's where you're supposed to go. Hallelujah. Sometimes we miss God's will because we're looking everywhere except forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Uh, we often talk about Peter. You know, sometimes people criticize Peter because he sank, but he was the only disciple that actually got out of the boat. Amen. But he did something that I believe that we're guilty of a lot of times is that Jesus is right there in front of us asking us to come to him asking us to draw to him. 
But oftentimes, see, here's what happens is a lot of times the enemy likes to distract us. He likes to throw deceptions our way. He likes to throw thoughts our way. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> he loves to throw evil speaking our way. He loves to throw attacks our way by people. He loves to throw things at us that will distract us and disturb us. He throws tribulations our way. He throws pain. He throws a lot of things at us. And instead of keeping our eyes on Jesus, we get our eyes focused on those things and we begin to sink in the ways of life. Just learn to keep our eyes on Jesus. Yes. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one, he's the one that started you on this journey. I, I, oh God. He's the one that began where you're at now. And he's more than able to finish the good work that he started inside of you. And you'll just reach out to him. And maybe, maybe you've been, maybe you've gotten your eyes off. I don't know. Maybe you you put them somewhere else. But I'm just telling you, one thing that Peter did, and then we'll learn this this morning. He said, oh Lord, help me for I perish. We just got to reach out to him this morning and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I did the wrong thing. Help me in Jesus' name. Amen. He's uh, doing a, a new thing. One thing that Jesus help me. I've seen some of the attacks that you've been through. I've felt in the spirit some of the attacks that y'all have been through. And I just want you to know, and the Lord wants you to know this morning, that you're not alone. He's fighting with you. He's fighting for you. He's right there beside you. Jesus said these words. He said, I will never leave you, Amen. nor will I forsake you, Amen. but I am with you to the very end of this age. And he's right there with you. He's working on your behalf. Do you not see it? Do you not know it? He's doing a new work. He's doing a new thing in your life. Yes, you're under attack right now. But my God, if you could just begin to see what's on the other side of the attack, you would be rejoicing and you would be dancing and you'd be singing God pray. Because I'm just going to tell you, you're about to be like Job this morning. Yes, you're under attack, but you're about to come out much greater than when you went in. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Uh, I'm almost done. Let's close number one. Thank you, Jesus. It says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were with one accord. In one place. This is why the devil doesn't like unity. 
Because when the church is in unity, nothing can stop the move of God. It doesn't matter what devil you're dealing with. Because you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what kind of lies he's spoken to you. Because you're more than an overcomer. It doesn't matter what kind of deceitful, lying spirit. God's bigger and God's better. That's all I'm going to say. And suddenly, mm. we've already been hearing this suddenly noise, haven't we? Yes. Every service has been filled with the presence and the spirit of the living God. Yeah. And suddenly, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. We once again need that suddenly noise. Amen. That suddenly sound. Yes, hallelujah. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. Yes. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. I'm just here to tell you this morning, your suddenly moment is approaching. Your suddenly approaching moment is here. Hallelujah. If you'll just lift up your hands, if you'll just glorify Him, hallelujah, then the Holy Spirit can flow right upon you. It's a gift from God. It's nothing that you have to earn. It's nothing that you have to deserve. But in that moment, in that spirit, in that moment, He can pour His Spirit out on you, and He can yes. begin speaking with other tongues, hallelujah. Yes. I had one person a long time ago. He asked me, he said, Mark, is, is the Holy Spirit necessary for getting into heaven? I said, no. I said, nowhere that I can find in the Bible does it say that. I said, buddy, I said, I want to tell you like this. I said, Holy Spirit is important to every believer to have. Because that's your power source. That's right. Amen. And as long as you're hooked to that power source, you're okay because you're working and you're moving. Kind of like this. If you have a washer or dryer that's not plugged in, it doesn't work very well, does it? We got a call just on Thursday, or yeah, Thursday. One of the refrigerators had went down and was out of power, and this was a very important refrigerator. It was critical that we get it back up. And when we arrived, we found that, well, having a refrigerator is nice, but if you don't have power to that refrigerator, it don't work so well. That's right. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone ever had a refrigerator go out and all your stuff that's in the refrigerator spoiled? Oh. It's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. It's important that you have the Holy Spirit so you can work and you can move properly in the Lord. There's no way that I can even begin to be up here without the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's great to have salvation. Salvation is the only way to get to heaven. 
through Jesus Christ. But my God, my Lord, if we don't have the Holy Spirit, we're going to be in some trouble because we don't have no power behind us. Amen. Jesus told him, he said, tarry here. He told him to tarry in Jerusalem. In chapter 1 of Acts, he said, tarry ye. He said that you may be a dude with power from on high. Hallelujah. It's once again time for the people of God to be a dude with power from on high. Because our time is now. Our time is here to reach people for the Lord. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know. I know we're seeing trouble on the right. We're seeing trouble on the left. We're seeing all kinds of things that I never thought in a million years that we would see. Amen. COVID. COVID has done so much. Uh, Playing so much fear into people. And I, you know, as I was telling Brother Jeff this morning, I said, not that the virus ain't real. I'm not saying that. But my God, it's not going to come near my dwelling. Amen. That's a promise from the Word of God. But we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and power in these last days. Amen. Yes, I believe Jesus is coming. But I also believe that this is the finest hour the church will ever see. Amen. I believe Oh, shut that out of the ocean. I've already told my wife this. I told my mom this. It is time for the Leander Church of God to get out of these four walls. Amen. It is time for us to take the gospel that we have been entrusted with, that we have been commanded with, and to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every tribe, every tongue, and every nation, hallelujah. Amen. But I'm just going to tell you this one. The only way that we will be successful, the only way that people will be reached for the Lord is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because if you know your word of God, it's the Spirit of God that does the drawing, hallelujah. It's only by His Spirit that people can be drawn to Him, hallelujah. Amen. I gotta stop. Help me, Lord. Thank you. Jesus. Oh, Lord, help me. Will you stay with me this morning? Just worship him. Just worship him. I tell you what, I felt led about doing this 